Welcome in to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a fun conversation today, a conversation that I'm disappointed more people aren't having. Quite frankly, we're going to be talking to the new entrepreneurs and the next entrepreneurs. But before we get there, let's talk about Harmonious. Why are we here? Harmonious is the disruptive business architecture that you need to know about for your business. It is the context to fit everything that comes through your business onto so you can run grow and scale your company efficiently. It's what the Fortune 500 gets wrong and what small businesses don't do at all. And that's why most small businesses fail. So while we're talking to the new guys today, listen closely because we're going to give you the tips and tricks that will help you get not only from the starting line to the finish line, but do so in a manner that is sustainable. So I want to bring on an amazing guest today. See his name on the screen there, DJ Scoob. Welcome to the show. (laughs) <laughs> hey, Brandon, how you doing? It's really great to be here today. Thanks for having me on. It. I appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome in. I if, if we just violated any trademarks, it's not me. It was him. He did it. <laughs> so we'll well, you know, what's funny is that's why I have the K and Scoob. So I don't do that. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble with anybody. OK, so nobody's getting sued here, please. That's not what we're about doing. <laughs> but all right, let's dive in here. So um I want to know you, you obviously you help new entrepreneurs. We were talking before we hit the record button a little bit. Um, Tell me a little bit about what you do with new entrepreneurs and helping them get started. Sure. So first of all, I do have a podcast called the undiscovered entrepreneur, where we talk to brand new entrepreneurs that are just getting started in their entrepreneur adventure. We talk about the struggles. We talk about their accomplishments and their goals and everybody that listens and everybody that's in the tribe with me, all my school believers learn something about starting their own entrepreneur adventure. I also do entrepreneur coaching. So if you want a little more handholding, if you want to figure out how to get the basics down first, how to get through those struggles and your failures, I'm there to help you along all the way. And then uh, just helping as many people as I can with whatever knowledge is up in this brain thing I have going on. So that's really what it's all about is helping everybody else get across that start line, get started in their entrepreneur adventure. I love that. We all need that little push and that extra a little bit of confidence that comes from having a mentor and a guide. Um, I love that you're doing that, but I'm curious, how how did this all start for you? Oh boy, that's a heck of a story. I hope you got time for this. Okay, <laughs> so this actually, believe it or not, this whole thing started out as a failure, a complete failure. And it has a little bit to do with my name too. So when I started this whole thing, I wanted to be a karaoke DJ and a music DJ. That's where DJ Scoop came from. But I had no Uh, money. I had no equipment. I had absolutely nothing. So I was like, okay, I'm going to open a GoFundMe page and people are just going to give me money. Uh, That's wrong. That certainly didn't happen. I think I only made a couple hundred dollars in a couple months. And that was my mom helping me out. She told me later on that uh, that was her. So so after that tremendous failure, instead of throwing my hands up in the air and saying, you know what, this wasn't for me. It's not meant for me. Instead, I said, why did this not work? Why did this not happen? What could I have done differently so it would have happened? So after about a year of straight research and different types of running uh, crowdfunding, entrepreneurships, things like that, I heard over and over again, start a podcast and get a, get a group of people that want to help you. So I was like, okay, cool. I could do that. So I decided to help brand new entrepreneurs that are just getting started their entrepreneur venture, just like me, just like what I was doing and get their struggles and their accomplishments, just like me. And for, from then on, it's like, okay, I'm going to put the karaoke thing aside just for now. Not forgotten, but just as aside for now, because I love this podcasting thing so much and helping all these people all at once. I got to keep doing that. And I've been doing it for about just over two years now. And I got just about 80 episodes all put together so far. Um, and that's also prompted me to uh, become an entrepreneur coach to help people uh, with their struggles and things of that nature, like I talked about a little bit earlier. And it's all been just a fantastic adventure. That's why I call it my entrepreneur adventure. A lot of people say entrepreneur journey, but journey to me, sounds like there's an end and I don't want it to end. So I would rather have an, a whole adventure. My life is an entire adventure and that's why I put it that way. So that's kind of the long short of it, Brandon. I love that. So you kind of fell backwards into this. You found something you love and then you ran with it. And if that's not the entrepreneurial adventure, <laughs> I don't know what is. So I love that you're bringing your passion and helping new entrepreneurs find what it is that makes them light up and and they can bring to the world. So give me a little bit of behind the scenes. So you you have a podcast, you have a community, you have your tribe of of new entrepreneurs. 
what is it that you do with them? Like, what are the first steps when someone says, okay, I might want to be an entrepreneur and they come seek you? What do you do with them? Well, the first thing we really sit, we do is sit down and say, okay, is this in your zone of genius? Some people not sure what that even means. Uh, what that means is something that you love to do that you'd be willing to do for free for no cost because you love doing it so much. That's your zone of genius. It just gives you happiness. It gives you abundance without even thinking about it. When people say I don't really work, that's what they're actually saying is I'm not working because I'm playing because it's something I really love to do. Uh, and that's what I do is I help people find that zone of genius. Once we find the zone of genius, we find how do we get other people to to support you in the same zone of genius? How do we find people, uh, whether it be through podcasts, whether it be through YouTube, gathering a tribe of people that want to support what you do or want to follow you in what you do because they want to do something similar, the same thing, or have that same knowledge that you have. After that, we find a way to monetize that, whether it be a course, whether it be a product of some kind or something like that. So people could start gathering that information and you start getting paid for it in some way, shape, or form. Doesn't always have to be money, though. Sometimes you just change exchange services. Like I've been doing editing services to get on somebody else's podcast. I've done that once or twice. Or, you know, uh, got a chance to uh, try some new software that's not even on the market yet because I had them on, I'm a commercial on my podcast. There's other ways of doing things besides money. But it all works to get into that same round of community where we all are getting together and learning something new and getting across that start line. Once you start getting across the start line, you start making these little, this is a new knowledge I've been working on lately. Uh, you start making these snowflakes. Everything you do is a snowflake. You get enough of these snowflakes together, you make a snowball and you get enough of these snowballs together, you start throwing around at each other or you make a snowman, one of the two, depending on how you work <laughs> things out. So that's kind of the way I think about it is starting with your zone of genius. What can we do with the zone of genius and how do we take it to the next level? And along the way, we find our, our struggles, our failures and how we deal with those is how we move on into our next entrepreneur adventure. What the lessons that we learned from these failures, from these struggles that we have is what actually builds us up to the, our next level. Uh, a lot of people say failure is bad. I think failure is amazing. I thank myself for failing. My whole my whole thing that I'm doing right now is because of a failure. It's really changed my mind about failure and how instead of just throwing my hands up in the air and saying, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. I feel great. What did I learn from it? Great. Boom. Let's move it into the next thing and not do that twice. So that's kind of that's kind of what I think about when you ask that question. Yeah. And I think. Uh, I love what you said about failure. I always classify things instead of wins and losses. I, I say they're wins and learns. There's there's no way to lose if you learn something or you just educate yourself on on what not to do. That's that's what this journey is all about. Um, I love that perspective. And I love that you teach people that. So I want to highlight something that I think is really cool that you offer. I'm going to toss it on the screen here. Um, Woo! It's, it's the <laughs> website you have set up and the the freebie. I guess that you have that you can send people to tell me a little bit about this because it's it's one of the most unique things i think i've heard about starting a business so absolutely so what this is is a free ai prompt that i've put together so basically what happens you go into the ai uh i think i have it set up through chat gpt no it's uh, there's too many of those it's on there okay and basically <laughs> you just follow the instructions that's on there put the prompt in there and it actually gives you articles it gives you ideas it gives you different ways to be able to start your entrepreneur adventure. So say, for example, I want to be a podcaster. So make sure in all the prompts that says, you know, I want to be a podcaster, this, this, this. You put that in there and boom, it comes up with all different kinds of articles and different types of ideas for you to actually get things going. Starts those juices flowing, coming up with ideas because it's basically an idea generated for what you want to do to get across the start line. Yeah, that's really cool. So if you're, in, if you're thinking about starting a business, I would say check that out. I mean, it, it can't hurt for sure. And it'll prompt those ideas that maybe you didn't think of and give you evidence to support what you're doing, which is a lot of times how we talk ourselves out of ideas, right? Is we, we have these ideas and then we say, oh, no, it can't work. Well, leverage the Internet, leverage AI to see how things are already working in that market or could be working, could be optimized. And you as an entrepreneur can go solve that problem. That's what entrepreneurship is. You are finding a problem and providing a solution and getting paid for it. Um, so that's a really cool tool. I'm, I'm glad you set that up. Um, I'll have to check it out. But 
so transitioning from that, we have our idea, right? Then we we go into starting a business or just getting paid for the service, trying to monetize a little bit. Where do you take people from there? What, how do we actually grow a business once we have this idea validated to some degree? Uh, you just keep building it up in different ways. Make sure you're networking with other types of people that might be interested in what you're doing. Uh, start building a tribe uh, or even just a community. Start building a community around you. Uh, even if it's just a Facebook community, that way they start talking to each other and not just you. That way they're learning from each other, not just you. You could even probably even take a step back a little bit and just see what happens. And then from then on, it's just kind of growth and figuring things out. But getting across the start line is probably the hardest thing about any any entrepreneurship. It's just getting over that fear and that fear of failure. Do you know what the acronym is for failure? No. First attempt in learning. Hmm. That's I learned that a while back. And then fear, false evidence appearing real. Yep. That's a big that one, one that I've learned. Yeah, that one's that one's huge for me. I've learned that when I was I was a 16 year car salesman. That's where I got most of my sales experience from. And that was something that my manager always kind of drilled into me is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to at least try something. You never know if it's going to work or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good perspective. And I, a lot of people don't have it when going into business for the first time, at least. And that's that's where you get your feet wet and you'll learn. Um, so I, I love that you you help people get over over the start line, as you say. I love that tagline. Um, <laughs> So then what do you, how do you set up your support ongoing? I know you have coaching and consulting. What does that look like to make sure, I, as I mentioned in, in the intro to the show, you know, failure rates among new businesses, especially are very high 50% within the first year, 80% within five years and 96% in 10 years. It's ridiculous. It's astronomical. And we shouldn't be failing mm -hmm. at those rates. How do you help people ongoing to make sure they're staying the course and they're actually having long-term success? Keep in their mindset the where it's supposed to be to keep moving on. And I think that's where a lot of people kind of misconstrue what failure actually means. Because, okay, I'll fail. What am I going to do with that failure? Mm. I mean, that's I think that's the most important thing. If you throw your hands up in the air and say, I'm done, then you really have truly failed. That is the ultimate failure is when you just quit. But if you have the mindset where you think to yourself, okay, what did I learn from this? What can I do to pivot and then put, you know, integrate what I've learned from this failure into my next thing? Then you don't really fail. You just pivot. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that's I think the mindset of that is where a lot of people are going wrong with these failure rates or these give up rates. I guess you can say we don't want to say fail too much. But, yeah, these people that just stop doing what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, to some degree, there there are there are things that make you stop. It, having to make payroll and having no money in the bank will make a business close down. I'm not saying that's a failure, but these are very real things. If you run out of money and you have to close your business, you, it happens. And these are these are real stats. They're unfortunate stats, but they're real that mo the majority of businesses will not make it and, and succeed. And even the ones that do, how many of those are just their paycheck to paycheck? Or if, if they have a bad month or two, they're out. That's what that's what this podcast is about. It's bringing on people like you, bringing these topics to light so entrepreneurs can thrive and grow and we can leverage the harmonious architecture to really have a sound system to grow our businesses. Um, I'm really passionate about this. And you say the zone of genius. I mean, this is, I could tell you're right on board with me. This is what I'm all about because entrepreneurship should be fun. We should have a good time. We should be smiling and laughing and playing. And it shouldn't be, you know, the worry of doom and gloom on the, on the horizon constantly. So I, I love that you're helping new entrepreneurs get across the start line and get them to that next level. Um, do you have a couple of uh, success stories or, or cool stories from clients you've worked with and, and help start their business? Yeah. So I have one right now, uh, a coaching client named Deborah, and she's a podcaster, but she was learning to be a life coach. And uh, we actually got together, came up with the name of her company. We came up with her strategy of, of building a questionnaire. We came up with the ideas of where to find her people. And that's kind of where we're at right now. She's finding a lot of success out of that. Uh, actually gotten two or three clients since we've talked. So that's been really good. Um, what else? Oh, uh, Sky, uh, who is a home baker. 
has been it, that's been really amazing to talk to her. She's really good at what she does, but she didn't know how to take how to actually even get started. She just baked uh, cinnamon rolls at home, and then people wanted them. So we're like, okay, here are her, here are the first steps you need to take. Try to build an audience. She she took uh, her baking to TikTok, and it just completely blew up. So now she actually has two or three clients that she's consistently making the cinnamon rolls to, and now she's talking about having a, a booth at a couple of other like a flea markets and things like that. And then hopefully I think our next step is actually going to be a subscription service for her cinnamon rolls. So she has some consistent income coming in. So like a company, like I want your cinnamon rolls twice a, twice a month. Okay. That's going to be whatever it is dollars. And I'll have them hand delivered to you. So we have some consistent income coming in and that kind of thing too. So she has a lot of the great things going for her. Her baking's amazing. Her TikToks turned out really well. So that's two people that I could de definitely talk to about uh, that's had definitely some success. That's awesome. I, I love hearing the success stories because we don't know what's possible going into it. And that's part of the fear and doubt that comes into our minds before we start. But I, I love that you have those stories of success and triumph. And who knew? Baking. And she's making it and, and having success on TikTok. Like, really? Come on. There's nothing stopping you from starting that next business or that first business. Go out there and do it. Contact DJ Scoob. He's going to help you through it. Let me put this on the on the screen one more time. Um, the, the AI prompt that'll help you generate an idea or help you come up with an idea for your business. So real quick, I want to tie this back to the harmonious architecture. Use the harmonious lingo to uh, go over what I'm hearing here because we're saying a lot of the same things. Um, so the first and foremost, and DJ Scoob, I love how you led with, uh, especially this prompt, it's not about money, it's about impact, it's about passion. You said find your zone of genius. That has to be the foundation. Anytime me personally or people I know who have chased money in a business opportunity, it doesn't go well. Very rarely does it work out if you're chasing the money and the income. So for us, we always start with N. That is the first letter. It's navigate. It's your compass. It's your mission, vision, core values. Where is your company going? What are you about? What's your own personal why? And then from there, you're going to move into operate, which where we put operate is what do you sell? What is the, the value chain you deliver on? It's the product. It's the service. You got to figure that out. But then from there, you go to ubiquity. That's the U and that's sales and marketing. You have to be where your clients are and you have to be always there. It's not all, all places to all people at all times. I didn't say that. I said where your clients are. So for Sky, it's on TikTok. She found a following on TikTok. She's making great content. That's awesome. That's her ubiquity. That's all. That's the only place she needs to be. Maybe she could explore other avenues, but that's working. Leverage it. And then after that, you're going to go to um, your processes, dial in your processes so you can scale. Don't do anything else. If you're starting a business, just worry about those four letters. After that, we can roll on top and add on to what you're doing. We could talk about change management, analytics, metrics, legal, HR. I don't need you worrying about all that stuff. In the harmonious architecture, there's four letters that will get you from the starting line to your first dollar. And those are the things that we talked about today on this episode. And DJ Scoop, I think this was really, really cool. I haven't like I said in the intro, I haven't talked to a lot of people who help new entrepreneurs. I think maybe a lot of people think it's not a, a, a rich market, if you will, because they're new. They're not, they maybe they don't have income to be in business. I love that you are serving this market. Um, and I just want to thank you for that because it's an area of passion for both of us. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not about the money. It's helping other people. And then the money will follow later on. I'm not so worried, worried about the money at this point. I actually work two full-time jobs on top of podcasting and top of the coaching. I'm not too worried about that at this particular point. But it, uh, I'm more worried about helping you, helping you, the brand new entrepreneur that wants to get across the start line. I can, I am, I will, and I'm doing, to, doing it today. My son came up with that when he was six years old. We still use it today. He's 17 now. Um, but that's just really what it's all about. That's amazing. Well, Thank you so much for coming on. It was great to have you talk to new entrepreneurs. If you're new, if you want to be a new entrepreneur, if you want to get into business, I'll put it on the screen one more time. It'll be in the show notes. Go check and, out the uh, website. Go check out DJ my, Scoop. You go ahead. Yeah, my, real, real quick, my podcast, Undiscovered Entrepreneur is the name of the podcast. 
You can find it on all the major platforms. And my website is uepodcast.net. I just wanted to throw that out there. Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Very cool. So thank you again for watching, listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like, and drop us a comment. If you have questions down below, I'll get them to DJ Scoob. So if you want to start a business and you have questions, make sure you put them in there. We'll reach out and get you answers and get you connected. Until next time, thank you for watching and listening this episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We will see you on the next one.